my lips. Yeah. So today I want to talk about um, validation and accountability. Um, when you're going through your shadow work and your inner child healing. So when you work with me or any other spiritual advisor or if you're just doing solo work it is very important um i have found that any type of accountability in a situation you really have to shelf that in the beginning of the process first has to come validation and let me explain why because when you have trauma and your ptsd or it's your trauma that you're struggling with um, essentially is kind of blanketed with guilt and shame. You can't work through a situation and have accountability because there's two types of people. I mean, I'm sure there's more types of people, but the people that I've found on these journeys are either the one person who takes too much accountability. They take responsibility for shit that has nothing fucking to do with them. It's not, they look for what part they played in every situation and they bear the brunt of it. And that is usually because they've come from a, a household where, you know, they were told to minimize themselves and shrink and, you know, validate the adult's feelings. And many, many other nuances and traumas that can be attached to that. But the other person will lack accountability and refuse accountability because they also have that same guilt and shame. But it manifests in a way where internally they are always feeling like shit. So they're always looking for somebody to validate them because... They just never got validated ever in life. They were never reassured. They were never told that they were good or could do anything. They were always made to feel like they're a piece of shit. Now, there are lots of nuances and lots of other people. Please don't come in my comments and be like, well, for me, it's not like that. Okay, so either this video isn't for you or, or it is and you just person. Anyway. So, the reason why we go into validation first is because that's how you coax the inner child. That's how you heal the inner child, right? You validate all of the ways and things that they feel. So, a couple of examples of that would be, I had a client who said things like, you know, her choice of words were things like, all I do is give to everyone, um... You know, and, you know, she was very consistent in that narrative. <clears throat> now, she met my client long enough that I knew that's not true. That's not true. But now is not the time for accountability yet. Right? So as I validated her emotions of, well, talk to me about which, what that feels like. What does that mean? You know, give me an example of like, you know, and again, I choose my words very carefully. I'm just structuring it funky on here. But like, I'm not going to say give me an example because it sounds like I'm asking them to prove to me what they did. I, you know, get you to tell me moments in vulnerability that you felt taken advantage of or you or exploited or poured more in than you should have and through that process of speaking she realized that that's not true there's only one person that she pours way too much into and it was the relationship that she had been in for 20 years with an extraordinarily abusive man super abusive um, and she had endured so much emotional abuse. She had been with him since she was really young. He was substantially older than her. And the ideology that she had poured so much into her children and all they did was take, 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 and there was no relationship. And then she poured into, you know, this is why she doesn't have friends because friends, you know, they just want to use you and blah, 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 blah. Right, but the reality was she was a shitty friend. 
She was a terrible friend. She was a not great mom to her children. And that's why there was no relationship there. But all of those things stemmed from the fact that she was wearing this guilt and shame and he was exploiting it, right? So she didn't feel good about herself. And then he reiterated to her that she was a piece of shit. She was never good enough. He kept her feeling like no matter what she did, she could have done something that he had said for the past three years was something he would do. And then he would get home and be like, why would you do that? And she didn't understand because she thought surely she was going to get a pat on the head because she did the one thing that he had been saying for years he would do. And he was like, we don't do that here. We would never do that. He moved the floor completely on her and it devastated her, but it always kept her in this state of not good enough. So when she's working with me and I'm telling her that her feelings are valid and that the things that he said are wrong and that they, they're hurtful and that she's a good person, that she's smart, that she's funny, that she's beautiful, that she's always been the prize, then she can break free from that toxic place because somebody's speaking that into her. And then we get to a transition point in her working with me where she has to speak that into herself. It's no longer me. I We can't create that codependency. So now you, darling, have to tell yourself all of the things, right? And we do it in a bridge affirmation. And I'll make a separate video on that. But once she's healed and has a sense of self, right? She has a sense of uh, some confidence, right? Then we can bridge or we can broach, we can whatever, cut, get to the point where we're talking about who she was as a mother, right? And now it won't be, oh my God, I'm such a piece of shit. It'll be accountability. I m made choices that hurt my children. And now I have to grieve that and then figure out a way to essentially mend that relationship, hopefully, or respect the fact that my children do not want to mend it, right? So when you're going through looking at things, I had a commenter say something like, you know, I, all of my fuck ups, and I just want you to know you're not fucking up. Don't do that. If your knee jerk is to think about all your fuck ups, then the answer is put that on the shelf. Validate some emotions, some feelings, and some needs of your own. And you could pick that up off of the shelf later and look at it without the guilt and shame of looking at it like it's a fuck up and looking at it like, hey, I was a traumatized person and sometimes I traumatize. Okay, I hope this helps. Love you.